everybody, it's Saint from Explorers.life. I teach people how to build DIY campers. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the difference between the various parts and pieces of the Victron Lakes distribution system. Now this video is episode number 23 in a series of videos where I teach you all the basic electrical skills and concepts that you'll need to tackle the next electrical project in your camper. Now this video is kicking off a mini series talking about the Victron Lakes distributor or more accurately, the entire Victron Lakes distribution system. And since I started incorporating the Victron Lakes distributor into my DIY DIY camper wiring diagrams last summer. I've been fielding countless questions about it since many people have never seen something like this before. So this video is going to be an overview of the entire Victron Lakes distribution system because as of today, there are actually four different Victron Lakes distribution components, each with their own specific functions and in the upcoming videos, I'm going to dive a bit further into some of the more specific topics and reviews like how to turn a Lynx power in into a Lynx distributor, comparing the Lynx shunt to the smart shunt or the BMV 712, and comparing prices between the Victron Lynx distributor and a more traditional bus bar setup. So consider subscribing. Now, here are the four pieces to the Victron Lynx distribution system, and they are the Lynx power in, the Lynx shunt, the Lynx Smart BMS, and the Lynx distributor. Now let's talk about their similarities. The Lynx distribution system is essentially a modular bus bar system where each component serves a specific function depending on what you need, depending on your setup. Each piece consists of a positive and negative bus bar inside of a cover that protects the components as well as shields the bus bars from being touched accidentally. And they also have these little tabs on the ends of them so that they can simply be bolted together as many as needed without having to use wires, lugs, heat shrink, or anything like that to make the connections. These connections are made underneath the covers so there's no exposed energized metal. And they're blue. And that's pretty much where the similarities end. Now let's take a look at the first piece of the system, which is the Victron Lynx Power In. The Lynx Power In has two bus bars inside, one positive and one negative, with four studs on each one. Now the main purpose of the Lynx Power In is to accept the positive and negative wires from a battery bank. I typically see this used in very large battery banks where there are, for example, multiple series strings of 12 volt batteries wired together in parallel to make a large 48 volt battery bank. Now, even though that's how I see it most commonly used, it can also be used with multiple 12 volt batteries to make a 12 volt battery bank. The options are pretty much endless here. So in Victron's Wiring Unlimited book, there are four different approved ways to wire a battery bank and using the Lynx Power In would fall under the bus bars method. Now let's talk about the Lynx Shunt. The Lynx Shunt would be the next item after the Lynx Power In. Inside the cover of the Lynx Shunt, we can see an a &L fuse holder mounted to the positive bus bar and a shunt mounted to the negative bus bar with a whole host of other computer boards and electronics behind that. Now the fuse will protect the load side of the Lynx Shunt from an overcurrent event. And depending on how the battery bank is wired, it could be used as the main battery bank fuse, but it's always best if the battery bank fuse or fuses are as close to the battery bank as possible, which with this, it's uh, usually not. But the fuse is not the star of the show with the Lynx shunt. The shunt is. A shunt measures the amps leaving the battery bank while discharging or the amount of amps going back into the battery bank while charging, essentially. And it keeps a tally of those amps leaving and returning so that you can have a highly accurate idea of how full your battery bank is. Now the downside of the Lynx shunt it does not have Bluetooth capabilities. So in order to pull the data from the Lynx shunt, you need to be setting up a system that has advanced monitoring capabilities by means of using like a Serbo GX uh, from Victron or a Color Control GX or any of the other Victron GX devices. Now, all of that is admittedly fairly advanced level monitoring, which is why I don't have it in many of my diagrams at explorers.life, since it's both an added cost and largely optional. But it is pretty cool, and it's a great product. It's just not for everybody. Now, let's move on to the next component, the Lynx Smart BMS. The Lynx Smart BMS is specifically designed to work with the Victron Smart Lithium batteries. It's a lithium battery BMS, a shunt, and a master battery disconnect all wrapped up into one nice, neat blue package. Now this is only approved for use with Victron batteries though. So if you're using uh, the Victron Smart Lithium batteries, you should definitely consider this. But if you're using any other types or brands of batteries, Victron does not recommend the Lynx Smart BMS for that purpose. Now finally, and likely what you actually came to see, the Victron Lynx distributor. 
Now I have the Victron Links distributor in nearly every single one of the diagrams at explorers.life slash solar wiring diagrams. And I used this when helping out Andy Rawls when we installed a complete electrical system in his Airstream remodel. The Lynx distributor is a positive and negative bus bar with four fuse holders mounted directly to the positive bus bar with the purpose of supplying fused power to all of your high amperage DC loads like your inverter, charge controller, DC to DC charger, and 12 volt fuse block. Now the positive and negative bus bars are kind of stacked. So when you're trying to run power to all those high amperage DC devices, the wires come out of the Lynx distributor stacked and protected with a fuse, which makes for clean and incredibly organized wire runs. If more than four circuits need to come from the Lynx distributor, multiple Lynx distributors can simply be bolted together end to end to give you as much space as you possibly need. Now, although I am a Victron ambassador and I work closely with them, this is not a sponsored post. I just really like this product. In fact, the bus bar system that I showed you had a DIY nearly two years ago, I kinda don't even recommend making that anymore. Just because the stacked wiring and the cover of the Lynx distributor is just a better setup. And the systems that everybody has been building using my diagrams since I've started recommending the Victron Lynx distributor have just turned out so clean. And a bonus, the Victron Lynx distributor also has a little computer board and some lights inside that will show you if you have a blown fuse. The lights are designed to work when paired with the Victron Lynx shunt or the Victron Lynx BMS, but if you aren't going to use either one of those, there's a $10 workaround to get them to light up, which I'll be covering in an upcoming video. Now, that's the rundown of the Victron Lynx distribution system. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to slightly modify a Victron Lynx power in so that it can hold fuses, just like the Lynx distributor, so that you can have a properly fused bus bar system at a lower price point so that you don't have to have bus bars, jumper wires, breakers, and fuses just all over the place in your system. Now, I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody or a group who you think could use it. Hit the like button and leave any questions you've got or new things you learned in the comment section below. Subscribe if you wanna see more DIY camper building tutorials, and I will see you in the next video. Yeah.